Hey, what is up? The Leafs Convo back in business for Oak Ridge Ford in London, Ontario. OakRidgeFord.com. It is Thursday, October 29th, 2020. I'm Norm, along with Mike. It's going to be a quickie teeing things up for the next big collab this coming Sunday. Leafs Convo poll and community with all of these signings and moves, etc. Are the Leafs ready to ride? Mike, 148 respondents, the OGs and converts participating. 80% say yes. Good morning. Good morning, Norm. Um, well, I think overall fans have to be pleased with what Kyle Dubas has done. I mean, obviously, uh, you're going to have to see the results in game action. But, you know, in theory, looking at what they did, adding Wayne Simmons, uh, adding Zach Bogosian, adding Joe Thornton, um, Jimmy VC. I mean, I think that they plugged some holes, uh, TJ Brody on, on the top mm-hmm. pairing, and they plugged some holes. They added some veteran character. They added some depth at forward after trading Kapanen and Janssen. Um, and I, I think that right now, you know, they look like a team that could have some success. But again, a lot of things, uh, you know, ride on that, whether they get production uh, out of their core players, which is imperative, whether they get good per- good performances out of Freddie Anderson, a lot of things have to click into place. But right now, just looking at how they assembled this team uh, in free agency and making a few deals, I think a lot of people have to be pleased. This is the Leafs combo for Oak Ridge Ford. Zero percent continues at Ford stores right across Canada, more specifically and most importantly, Oak Ridge for Get At Me in Community or at I Am Norman James on Twitter, Massey Gakowski. How I see it, I think these signings put the Leafs in the top five with Tampa, Philly, Boston, Washington, Roddy Roddy, 67. If not now, then never. COVID-19 says, in terms of the Leafs being ready to ride, Matthew, don't call me Tony Tanti. I do wish the Leafs could have added another top four defenseman. It's interesting. Some fans and followers of this team think the Leafs, um, as put together right now, once you know, fully understanding of one another and, and this team's capabilities are good to go. Others still feel like, There's work to be done with that defensive group, even bringing in TJ Brody and Zach Bogosian and signing Travis Dermott to a one-year deal. I mean, Bogosian is a depth guy. I mean, I think he's going to play. I think he's going to play significant games, but I don't think he's going to be a top four. I think he's going to be what he was with Tampa. He filled in with guys like Hedman and guys like Sergachev, but mostly he was just there for depth. I don't think they can depend on him to play, you know, whatever, how many games, if it's 82 or Mm -hmm. 60 or whatever. Uh, I think he's going to be in and out out of the lineup based on who they play, you know, a penalty killer, uh, a right-hand guy who can provide some physicality on the blue line. You know, somebody's going to have to step up, whether it's Justin Hall playing with Muzzin or Miko Lettinen, who's lighting up the KHL, or Dermot, who you just mentioned, who signed a one-year contract. And it's very much a prove-it deal for Travis Dermot. He only had 11 points last year. You know, he had some good moments coming back from the shoulder injury. But really, if you look at the arc of his career so far, I think at this point, uh, a lot of people would have thought that he would be in the top four, and he really hasn't sort of taken the bit and run with it. So this is an opportunity for him. But it's very possible if he doesn't uh, jump at the opportunity that he could be a 6'7", and very possible that he could be uh, on Seattle next year. So we'll see. The Seattle Kraken? The Seattle Kraken. If he, can, I mean, if he can't the, crack in the Leafs lineup, he'll join Seattle. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, here for, I'm here I'm here forever. Try the veal. <laughs> well, a shout out to Will85 as well as Ron Hainsey for their contribs in community. Yeah, like, I don't know. The, the Leafs have done a lot of stuff. Kyle Dubas has led a, a, a real resurgence um, in making over this team or adding that second, third layer of player that you know we believe, and I, I'm sure the intelligentsia believe, is required to take that next step towards winning a Stanley Cup because that's really why we're here, right? As fans, we're, we're interested in watching players. I'm sure, we'd like to see them walk us through the, the bowels of um, Scotiabank Arena to get to the rink in their, you know, $1,000 outfits. And, you know, we like to see them, you know, smile and in memes and stuff. That's fun. That's great. When it all boils down to it, 
we, we want this team to win a Stanley Cup, right? We want this team to win championships. And um, I, I'm, I'm seriously interested in the composition of this team now. And I, I, I love the, the veteran infusion. Will it pay dividends in the end? I guess we'll have to wait until February to find out how this thing is starting to come together, Mike. The OHL and the AHL set to start in February have to think that the NHL is either going to follow suit or lead the way. Well, it's possible the uh, that the NHL starts earlier because we know, you know, the more games that they play, uh, the more money that they'll make, and uh, I, I still think that there's a a bridge that will have to be crossed with the NHL if they play less than 82 games, and I think more than likely you're going to see a battle like we had in Major League Baseball about prorated salaries, and they're already taking a 20% hit with escrow and a 10% deferment. So if all of a sudden the NHL comes out and says they're playing 48 games instead of 82, and they say prorate the salary, then these players, you know, could revolt like MLB did. So I mean, we'll we'll see what happens, and I hope that doesn't hope it's not the case because the PA and the NHL sort of worked in concert through this whole pandemic, but. I, you know, I mean, I think ideally they want to play an 82 game schedule, but they really can't if they're starting in even in January because they have to have the season done by July because the Olympics are in July and NBC, their carrier in the U.S., uh, wants the NHL season to be done before the Olympics. So, uh, you know, that's that, those are the bridges that have to be crossed. But, um, yeah, it, the, the OHL came out yesterday after their GM's meeting and said that their training camps are starting in mid-July, uh, mid, sorry, mid-January and starting February 4th. And then the AHL came out and said that their season is starting February 5th on the same day. So you would have to think that um, two things are at work. The NHL is probably going to start around there and they think that the Canada U S border will be open by then because both the AHL and the OHL have teams in the U S we're, we're trying to fit uh, baseball and basketball and hockey seasons into um, uh, our schedules. Thanks to COVID uh, really putting the clamps down on how not only we operate, but big organizations and industry operates. We had an ele- U.S. election coming up in less than a week. Uh, let's get into the Olympics. Okay. I mean, what mm. do we? I know NBC's got a lot of money invested, and I'm sure the the local broadcaster up here, CTV Two or whatever it's called. Do we? Do we even need it? I digress, but who gives a shit really about about the well, Olympics? I- Unless it's Bruce Jenner and Jackie Joyner, Kersey. And Carl Lewis and Ben Johnson, I'm really not that interested, you know. I'm not either, but I, you know, NBC has a, a billion dollar contract with them, and yeah. and it moved it moved from last year to this year, and I mean, it sounds like it's going to go in terms of like them having a bubble uh, in Tokyo, and uh, so you know, I believe it starts in mid July, I think like July 23rd. So you know, the NHL has their contract with NBC. It's the last year of that contract. They want good ratings. Um, and I don't think they want to extend the season into July. So, you know, the later they start, mm-hmm. the, the less games they're going to have. And again, we could have empty buildings to start the season, depending on what in each individual municipality um, is, is dealing with. And again, with the Canada U S border, depending on, what that what happens with that you could have this canadian division which i think would be a disaster yeah. i mean i i you know I, I think it would be you know i think the canadian teams would lose out because you know i think six of the seven canadian teams are playoff caliber and if you have a canadian division then only four of the seven teams yeah. make the playoffs so that 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 sucks so i i you know hopefully the border opens up around January 1st and the season starts around that time and we can get back to some sort of yeah, normalcy. W- whether you're for battening down the hatches, locking things down, being super cautious or one of these people who just wants to push on. There are a lot of entanglements due to COVID mm-hmm. and uh, are you sure it'd be, it'd be nice to just blast through this pandemic and act like it doesn't exist but it does exist until (laughs) numbers go way down until there's a a real sense that we are on top of this thing this is going to be life and they're going to have to think outside of the box and get creative 
uh, in terms of you know, putting together some sort of season that is not going to compromise the health of players and fans and going to keep uh, you know, you know, binational governments uh, at bay. So it remains to be seen how you know, everything comes together. You've got to be optimistic because we just want hockey to be played, but clearly there are a lot of other things involved here. I just want more shout-outs, Mike, before we go, because this is essentially a catch-up mm -hmm. episode of the Convo. Oh, happy belated 54th birthday to uh, a man we all know and love as Wendell Clark. Anything on Clarky? What What is the most memorable moment that he produced for you? And I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are a hundred of them, but can you pinpoint one, that goal he scored on Kelly Haruti in 93? 93. The 93 that was a conference bomb. final oh against... My. Yeah, well, I mean, he, he scored the goal he scored in Game Seven against St. Louis, and then rang one off a Cujo's head, yeah. um, and uh, um, and then obviously the hat trick in Game Six, which uh, obviously should have been um, you know, should have been the uh, winning effort in that game, but yeah. we won't go into that. But uh, yeah, I know there's there's so many memories, and you know it's funny because Wendell Clark is only a year older than I am, but you know. Um, he was a formative player in terms of my hockey life and just a great player. And unfortunately, um, you know, injuries took their toll on him, but he still had a great career. He's, I mean, he's a member of the, of the Leafs hall of fame and his numbers retired. And I think if he hadn't been hurt, he would have been a member of the hockey hall of fame. He was just a great player. Younger fans see him on YouTube beating the shit out of guys to a, a death metal <laughs> soundtrack and they get afraid. They, they think he's a terrible person, a terrible guy. He represents this knuckle-dragging era. He's a great hockey player. Uh, and, you know, a guy like that had to be a great hockey player in a uh, an incubator, in a rollerball-type setting, in a, you know, a uh, knock-em-down, drag-em-out environment. So, you know, he had to survive with his fists and beat the crap out of guys on a nightly basis, but also put up tons of points. And he wasn't that big a dude. So he deserves a lot more yep. credit than I think a lot of people want to give him uh, based on recency bias and the fact that, you know, uh, you know, today's game has moved so far away from the physicality of it. But, you know, you if Austin Matthews is drafted in 1985 and he's got skill to burn he's also gonna have to probably fight somebody along the way because that's just the way it was back then so we gotta give Wendell Clark plenty of credit for surviving as as much as he did um putting a ton of his opponents in the infirmary but also putting a ton of pucks in the net as well and, and, and getting people out of their seats yeah I, I mean like I said I think he was my he was my favorite leaf and uh I you mm -hmm. know I wish there were more players like Wish there were more players. Uh, like a few them. more things. God's eye or the Leafs sniffing around Tampa's RFAs could move out Kerfoot Hole and Engvall to offer sheet Sorelli. Any comment on that? No, not a chance. Uh, I, I I don't think that there are going to be any offer sheets, and you could say the word collusion, but I don't think it's the case. I think it's just simply the fact that nobody's got any money. So I think what Tampa is going to do is sort of wait and wait and wait until they get these guys on bridge deals, and uh, you know that's what. Uh, in the Islanders are going to do with Matthew, Matthew Barzell. It's, uh, you know, there's no money out mm -hmm. there. Corey Parrish wants us to stay safe. Thanks, Corey. Appreciate you being an OG uh, and a convert at some point. Do you believe this team will enter training camp the way it is, or does Dubas still have something up his sleeve? We just love trades, 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 movement, transaction. <laughs> there's been uh, plenty of changeover in the last month. At some point, you just have to dig in and get everybody acclimated and ready to go at whichever uh, juncture it is uh, between now and February changes great, but too much of it could throw this team off kilter. Um, it's time to get this crew ready to rock. Well, I, I don't think like, you know, Kyle Dubas said in his last media availability that he he's staying open to possibilities, and, but you know, they don't have to make a trade to get under the cap you know, they could go with 20 or 21 players like they did last year. And I think they're, I think they're prepared to do that. But if an opportunity pops up, like if all of a sudden Zdeno Chara says, I want to play in Toronto, you know, I, I think they would be open to <laughs> it. So I, I, you know, no, I'm, I'm, and I'm not, I'm not, no, no, I know. I'm just saying a, a 
a veteran, a veteran free agent out there that they th- that they think can help them. And I'm using Char as the example, but there are other ones out there like Sammy mm-hmm. Vatnin and Mike Hoffman. You know, I, I seriously doubt it because I think those players want multiple years and and millions of dollars that the Leafs can't can't pay for. But if there's a veteran out there that says I want to come to Toronto and I'm prepared to take one year at seven hundred thousand, I think sure. they would still jump at that opportunity. Yeah, let's just see how the the current group of players fit in to the puzzle who's in who's integral who's out who's on the periphery who can go and uh which tips do you have to bring in uh these final pieces that we hope will uh put together a mosaic of success right mike uh any last things you want to add what you're working on well um I'm writing daily uh, at Hockey Buzz on the on the Leafs, whatever news uh, is happening. And lately, the the news happens to be players going to Europe. Uh, I, and I, I always butcher his name, so I'm just going to call him SDA. Uh, they're their young center who plays for Peterborough. He went to play for a KHL team. They sent Mac Hollowell, their Marley's defenseman, to a second division team in Finland. And this is the funny thing. They've, I think they've sent like six or seven players over to Europe to play. And COVID is spreading there. So, And uh, I know a couple players that were sent to the Swiss League uh, by other teams. The Swiss League just lowered their uh, uh, attendance for a 1,000 Uh, fans maximum to 50 so it's not a guarantee that these players are going to be playing because these leagues may shut down if it it starts spreading over there so we'll see what happens we hope we wish we dream we pray uh, we aim for great things Uh, but the world's in a tough spot right now so uh, don't forget about it but uh, don't lose hope mike talk to you soon